stage, it's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. The Texans offense heading out, and big changes in Houston this year. Of course, DeAndre Hopkins out, David Johnson in, and this is a team that won the AFC South, won a playoff game against Buffalo, and looked for a while like they might win another against Kansas City, but not meant to be. But, but Charles, what chances do you give this Texans team of capturing another division title? I give them a good chance, and I know that DeAndre Hopkins leaving cast a pall on that city and how people look at the roster but this is a good football team remember david johnson has a chance to really jump his play up again but they also signed randall cobb to catch passes as well and deshaun watson is still their quarterback oh and by the way jj watt if they get a full season out of him the defense is automatically improved now the problem is going to be the first seven games of the season Kansas City, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Tennessee, and of course, the Green Bay Packers. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was looking down at the schedule as you started to talk. That is a brutal stretch. I guess we'll know after about week seven where they stand. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. From the gun, here's Watson. He rifles one that's intercepted. The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. The Steelers take over first and 10. After the interception, here's Roethlisberger. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Roethlisberger connecting with James Washington. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. Well, that's how you take advantage of an early turnover. A sudden change situation, meaning ball's turned over. How's both sides going to handle it? One side handled it way better. They went right out on the field and put the ball in the end zone. One play, that just added insult to injury. Yeah, that just tells you on the defensive side, they didn't come out ready to go. Still reeling from the fact that the ball got turned over. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. DeAndre Carter returning it. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 the score as they start first and 10. Interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six. And just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visits. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. And this one through the uprights and good. Steelers 14. Texans nothing.
Rivers. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Here's Carter now on the return. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And now out comes Houston. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath. First, do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. Watson will bring up the Texans here. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. And now Watson throws another interception. Picked up by Steven Nelson. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. The struggles continue here offensively. Still nothing for him on the scoreboard and now an interception. Yeah, the offense looks extremely sluggish. Not really in sync at all. Dare I say, it looks like it got left behind in customs. Oh, you've had that in your back pocket. <laughs> you were waiting for that. Probably should have left it in my back pocket, too. Well played. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on this defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still wanting to move at a nice pace. On third down, Roethlisberger. He's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. That was J.J. Watt getting in there and getting him to the ground. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. Jordan On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Houston set to take over. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and ten. This is David Johnson, the former All-Pro. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. 31, David Johnson. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. From the 24, Watson. And this one complete to Will Fuller. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Now that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. A shotgun snap for Watson. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and it's picked up by the Steelers. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Recovered by the defense. Following the fumble recovery, it's Roethlisberger. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backside of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, 
Hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. A gain of six there on first. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the Texans' 28-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. The Steelers were last in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage a season ago, down around 35%. It's first and goal. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line. Second and goal. Again, it's Roethlisberger. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. Now, what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you kind of run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. And now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down. And this will be caught by its big tight end, Ebron, for a Steeler touchdown. touchdown. Two first quarter touchdown passes now for Ben Roethlisberger. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. Boy, these guys are off to the races, Charles. 20 to nothing already, extra point pending. Yeah, you always hear that term, they just boat race someone. Heck, it's car race, motorcycle race, plane race, whatever you want. Right now, they are sprinting faster. Extra point put through by Boswell, and it's now 21 to nothing. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Behind the chain, second and 13. Watson to give. This is Johnson. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Third and 15 coming up after that loss of two. Well, they went back to him, but the results were similar, so I highly doubt that he'll get another opportunity here on third and long. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Out of the gun, Watson. Dumping it off for Johnson. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but...
but they needed more than that. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Brian On fourth Anger. down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Well, the Steeler offense heading out for their next possession. And for them, you look back to 2019, no Ben Roethlisberger, and that meant no playoffs in the Steel City as they wound up 8-8. Eight and eight. But, uh, look, hope springs eternal this time of year. What chance, Charles, do you give the Steelers of getting back to the playoffs? Well, since you got all lyrical on me there about hope springing eternal, how about we go to Ben Roethlisberger, who's saying, I still want to win Lombardi's, and I say that with a plural. He may be in his upper 30s, but it feels like he's in his upper 20s, and he thinks he can continue to play, and the elbow feels good. But remember, without him last year, they scored 10 or fewer points five times. He's got to kickstart that offense with his play as well. Yeah, and those struggles to score points, it all culminated with an offense that was 30th in the NFL. So if they want to get close to sniffing another Lombardi, those numbers have to have a big uptick. And it'll help with that defense. T.J. Watt, Bud Dupree, Minka Fitzpatrick was an all-pro at safety. They're awfully good on that side of the ball. They'll try and run for it with Connor. It's a pickup of six. First down, Pittsburgh. Well, we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Right back to Connor here on first. Ross Blacklock on the tackle. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Roethlisberger on target to Washington. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 41-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. At the 41-yard line. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 41. There's Roethlisberger. And that's off the mark, incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. And all this Texans defense, they're all charged up now. They stop them behind the line for the second straight play. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. But don't tell any defensive coordinator I played for, but that might be considered a win for both teams because defensively they stopped them short and forced the fourth down. But offensively, they picked up enough yards to give their kicker a better shot if that's what they want to do. And he's not going to get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. He needed a couple, but he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And this Texans defense stands tall. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at the 34. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. T.J. Watt causing the disruption. He gets the sack. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much.
yards generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. Throwing on second and long. Watson, open man, the tight end fells. Watson's back. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Third and long. It's Watson being chased out left. He may try and run for this. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. 21-0, our score after one. Steelers 21, Texans nothing. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Operating from the gun. Watson. That's complete to Cobb. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually... You're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Oh, he almost intercepted it. They're just forcing it into too many tough spots. That was almost a fourth pick of the game. And now fourth down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. And this punt sails over the sideline, and the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold it. He up. trusted his defense. He trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it, be aggressive, because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own sideline. Now we'll see what his offense can do. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron caught left side. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. A gain of five. First down, Pittsburgh. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. Now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron. And he'll go down, but not before getting this 
just inside the 30. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. First and 10. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster, that's complete. And he's gonna be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Here's Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. That tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Angelo Blackson able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And now out comes Houston. And this, you'd hate to say that a drive in the first half must end in points, but you're down 21-0. They're going to have to get something going fairly quickly. I would agree totally with that because if you're going to mount the comeback, it's going to have to come in bits and pieces. It doesn't just all come at one time, right? We haven't seen anything more than a six-point touchdown ever in this game, right? So that's how it has to be done. Get points on the board now. Start your comeback. But you're exactly right. Let's get it going right here in this spot. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Watson, he fakes to Johnson and now looks to throw. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. Thus far, they haven't been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A little costly there. You wipe out the first down. You also move further back. No doubt about it. So you went from moving the sticks to them staying in the same spot, except for that one guy carrying the yard marker. He moves back farther. First and ten, Watson, he gets it to Cooks. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. They get 14 on that one, good for a Houston first down. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They gotta change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 
Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. This defense is really thrown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. On second down, Johnson. And he'll be taken down at the 34. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. A gain of a yard makes it third and 11. The Texans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. From the gun, here's Watson. Rolling to his left. He can run for it, and he will. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's four. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away that'll be taken about a yard deep and he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee maybe a yard shy of there at the 24 and Pittsburgh getting set to take the field they got the lead last time had to punt it though what's the key to this drive I think it's leverage ah, the leverage. big guys up front you know the motivational speech on the sideline is Guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he's standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. But they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. The Steelers on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. That one into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And here comes the Texans now. And this, let's face it, an important drive if they're going to get back into this ballgame. Think about going into the locker room down 21 to 10 
as opposed to 21 to 3. 21 to 10, a little more optimism, a little more bounce around the locker room, a little more discussion about how they're going to finish this thing off. 21 to 3, I think discouragement clouds that locker room. Yeah, and I think a touchdown much bigger than a field goal on this drive just to get into the end zone and get that momentum. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it, and it took the ball off course. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again is Watson. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And he's in for six and a Steeler touchdown. Touchdown. Part of what we just saw, that's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well. Yeah, they didn't get overexcited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead is swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. And his kick is good. Makes the score. Steelers 28, Texans 3. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Here's Carter now on the return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Houston set to take over. Take over first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 26. Fresh off the pick six, it's Watson. Complete, it's Johnson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation... And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Stephon Tewitt able to shake free and get home for the sack. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Fourth down. Well, their first two drives only yielded three points. They might be thinking it's time to make something happen. Push the ball downfield and try and gain some points that way. Unfortunately, incomplete. Here's Brian Anger now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone.
Ahead of the chains now, second and two. To throw here, Roethlisberger. Setting up the screen, this is Samuels. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. The last catch took him two yards in the wrong direction, so now what can they do on third? Now it's Roethlisberger. But it's brought in by Washington. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Looking to throw again on second down. Roethlisberger. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. On the handoff, Connor, and he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But it's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. And now out comes Houston. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Johnson's got it complete. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers 43. 12 yards there and a first down. So we've come to half. 
halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, here's Kareth White on the return. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They had a big first half. Now they have a chance to add to that lead here in the opening possession of the second half. And everyone always asks about halftime adjustments, kind of the key phrase. What did you do at halftime? Well, the way they ran offense in the first half, I think they were very calm, congratulatory, but also what they were saying is, don't expect them to be the same on defense. They'll be the ones making the adjustments. Let's see what they do, and we'll attack accordingly. And we'll see how they attack here. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. First and 10. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just not been up to the challenge in this game, and this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good. Soft in spots. There's an easy throw and catch for another first down. Here's a throw over the... Taken in by his tight end and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now Roethlisberger to throw and he's got his man, the tight end McDonald. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Catch short of the marker by just a yard. Leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Again, it's Roethlisberger. On the left side, it's McDonald. And he'll go down at the 28. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. To throw again on second down. Roethlisberger, open man, completes it to Smith-Schuster. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 yards there and a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Ball at the 9 on second and eight. Here's a handoff to Connor. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the 9 to the 8. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. This will be the 8th play of the drive. It's 3rd and 7. Now Roethlisberger. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. 
three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Boswell's kick is good, and their lead will swell up to 28. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Here's Carter now on the return. And able to get this out to the 25. Here's the Texans offense now, reading for their first possession of the second half. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? so tough because we always talk about it being a team game and you need all 11 working well together but every now and then partner you need that one guy who can make a play against all and the Steeler pressure too much here he's gonna go down and now following that sack looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field we'll check on his status when we get back Assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Now the backup, A.J. McCarron. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. McCarron from the gun on third. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Or maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long. But a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. Another attempt, Bill. another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. T.J. Watt, his second sack of the night. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. And that is incomplete. McCarron. We're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Houston.
This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it, forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. They begin on the ground here with Connor. And some room to roam now. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another good game. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. On second down, Connor looking for space. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. And if anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield, and there's another completion. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith Schuster. That's complete. And he is out of bounds right around the 10 yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. The Steelers were last in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage a season ago, down around 35%. It's first and goal. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. That's one of the dangers of the quick game. If you only have a two- or three-step drop, if you don't get the ball to someone open right away, those defenders are right near the line of scrimmage and then get on top of you in a heartbeat. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. To throw again is Roethlisberger. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. James Washington was the intended target, but now it's third and goal. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. Third and goal as they look to pour some more salt in the wound. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to go down. He sacked back in the 24. J.J. Watt able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. That's the second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. And Boswell's kick is good. 
But hold everything here. They might have hit the kicker. And if they did, that'll be a first down. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Houston set to take over. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it, and it took the ball off course. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. They'll hand it off now. Johnson. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And oh, they almost had another one. They are all over the football in this game. Nearly another pick. Now fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. Now a handoff, Johnson. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Throwing on second and eight, McCarron. And that's complete to Cooks. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That catch good for five. It's third down. Brings up third and three. On third down, Johnson. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. 
and he's going to profess that he was happy to get points, but and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Welcome back now here in London. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. This is Connor running right. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Carrier. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Again, a run with Connor. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Good. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They run with Connor. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. The ball carrier. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now it's Connor. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Are seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Play action. Now Roethlisberger. And he'll find Washington. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first and 10 is Connor. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Trying to get the first with Samuels. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. Less than a yard. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. 
looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into his windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. Now a first down throw, Watson. And yeah, he's going to keep it here. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Flush to his right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Play three in the drive, none is successful. They go backwards after those two first down gains. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. After the sack on first down, Watson, he's got his tight end. It's fouls. The reception good for seven. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. From the 50, it's Watson. And yeah, that will be incomplete. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They will indeed snap it to Watson. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And this is going to be incomplete. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And this defense will take over right at midfield. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and ten right at the 50-yard line. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Zach Cunningham, the leading tackler in the AFC in 2019, is there defensively. At the 49-yard line. Second and nine. Again, it's Connor. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. He was tackled at the 46-yard line. It's a gain of three. Brings up third and six. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. 39-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Hey, 4 one Mike, 4 one Mike. All day. Here's Connor. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Second down and seven. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he's going to be close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Texans' 29. Seven yards there at a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On first down. 
It's Connor, and he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feel pretty good about your next couple of calls. From the 25, here's second and six. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. Brought two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Washington's got it. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And the catch made by Johnson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Brings up second and five at the 11-yard line. Working with second and five now. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor, and he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll keep it on the ground. Connor, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, lots of praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was a game where they were off and running in the first quarter, Charles, and never looked back. You know, partner, after a while, we always say the same thing, don't we? They set the tone early, right? They started fast. So I asked a few of my horse racing friends, do you have a term for me that we can use to cover that? And they said, yeah. When a horse breaks out like that, you say he caught a flyer out of the gate. And that's exactly what this team did today. I mean, they jumped out there, jumped on them, and were never headed. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long, everybody.